Welcome, this is Solopreneur Success Strategies, where we talk about mindset, your website, your brand, your social media marketing, your customers, how to sell to your customers, how to, how to find your customers, how to talk about the skills and knowledge you need in your business, and free software and tools to help you save time, money, and be more productive, as well as strategy and systems, here on Solopreneur Success Strategies. Welcome. Welcome, this is Jane Gardner and welcome to Solopreneur Success Strategies. Today is Get Your Message Out Tuesday and today on Get Your Message Out Tuesday we're talking about your brand, your messaging, your website. But we're not talking today about all that because today we're talking about Pinterest. We talked about all of that previously. You can have a look at jgtips.com backslash YouTube. Go to my YouTube channel. You can go back and look at some of those discussions on brand and your messaging. Because right now we're talking about your brand messaging on Pinterest. And we've also looked at Facebook and Twitter. And today we're going to be having a look at some of the successful uh, Pinterest brands and what they, why they are there. And you sh- why you should consider whether or not you should be on Pinterest. So who am I? I'm Jane Gardner. I work with my husband and our structural engineering firm. And three years ago I came onto the internet in order to help others with their business. And today we're going to talk about getting your message out Tuesday, where we're going to talk about Pinterest today to see whether or not it's a place for you to be in your business. So this is Pinterest. Um, This is my uh, Pinterest account at Jane Gardner. And she's Jane Gardner 5283. (laughs) Um, It's not the greatest. Um, It's okay. Um, we'll have a look at some really successful brands on uh, Pinterest. I occasionally uh, do a lot of quotes. I'll just have show you quickly. There's a new feature now called Build Your Showcase, and I guess I didn't know about this till today, so we'll talk about it maybe next time. But it looks like you can just put together some of your pins onto the profile so that when people come to your profile, they see those first. But I have, as you can see, 63 boards, uh, 1,600 pins. I've been doing it for a couple years, and I only have about 229 followers. And a lot of the times, the pins are on different boards. So this is just the board itself. You can put a picture of one of your pins on the front of the board. So, for example, to look at the pins in the business of at-home business, I just open it up, and there's 27 pins and 159 followers. And I t- talk a little bit about what the pin is board is about, and then I have some pins. Um, most of those are not my pins, so I have to do more, except for this exploit demonstration. I did that one. But I do have a few others that I have done myself that have come from my Business of At Home Business um, website. So, for example, if you were to click on that, it would go back to my website. So it's one way to have a link that in Pinterest, which is engaging to others, and maybe they'll click on it and go to your website, or maybe they'll pin it and send it over to their website under their topic, whatever that might be. And then uh, Pinterest has um, a long shelf life for their pins. They can be here for a couple of years. I mean, that one, I don't know. I don't even remember that one. I think that's about two years ago. (laughs) So anyway... We weren't here to look at my uh, Pinterest account. We're going to be looking at some successful or people who feel there are successful or companies on. um, Let's go. Yeah, let's go to get go plan first. I opened them up first just to see if we can get them to there. So we'll have a look at go pet plan and why they're on Pinterest. And then you can decide whether or not you want to be on Pinterest. So it's a pet insurance company. And they like to foster their brand by focusing on pet health and exceptional customer service. And they have a goal. And so you have to ask yourself, what is your goal? And enable communities who want to provide the very best for their furry-legged family. So they want to provide the pet owner with tools to care for their furry pets and attract new audiences through compelling content and establish brand leadership in the pet health space. And so this is how they do it. So they showcase, of course, their expertise and convey their brand personality. 
they began creating boards with compelling images from their popular pet health magazine. And then they expanded into educational content, such as health tips and read all about it boards. This one's cute. Isn't it cute? Sorry. <laughs> For those on audio, I just saw a picture of a little black cat kitten. <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyway, they want to uh, attract people to their brand with general broad reaching content. And of course, then if someone would pin that picture of that cat to their board, then there's a link from Pet Plan to that person's board. So anyway, so they wanted to increase awareness of pet insurance. So they added a pin it button to their website. They included um, Pinterest follow buttons in their email footers and optimized their site content. And they attracted a massive following of new pinners interested in their pet's health. So they felt that it's worth doing for their business and taking the time to do that. Uh, so for example, they have um, information on food, um, some of the diseases, as well as, oh, there's a Karen Terra puppy. Sorry, I gotta pin that one. <laughs> Actually, I should take a picture of my own Karen Terra. Terrier. So here's a Karen Terra puppy. Oh, that's from uh, someone else's uh, website, and it's been pinned onto Go Pet Plan. So that's not good. That's a pretty good deal, isn't it? Um, oh, sorry. I, I've got I've got to pin that. So I will save that to my board. I'm not sure what board I'll save it to. Oh, animals. I'll save it to animals. And, <laughs> and so now I will have a connection to Pet Plan Pet Insurance which I can't afford, but whatever. <laughs> so they saw an 87% increase in new site traffic and a 35% increase in page views and a 12.5% increase in insurance quotes on their website just from the link between Pinterest and their website. And, of course, I guess some people could actually click on these and actually get information on, yeah, learn more at gopetplan.com, for example. They could click on that link and go to Pet Plan. So for petplan.com, you wouldn't think an insurance company would be um, on the internet, but they are on um, Pinterest, but they are. So let's have a look at another unusual, oops, no, unusual one. Let's see which one's more unusual. We've got the typical ones for... Uh, Okay, let's go to, um, what's the most unusual that I have? Oh, I guess um, that would be archdaily.com. It's an architectural type thing. I'll show you what I mean. And they even have one that's um, also a Spanish. So this is Art Daily. Um, it's a curated selection of architecture by Art Daily. They wanted to increase people's interest in architecture. Um, they have um, 86 boards and 380,000 followers. Woohoo! Because they show off a lot of interesting interiors and architecture uh, around the world. Let's open up one of them. So they wanted to um, look at increasing their readership. They have a magazine. So they wanted to help readers discover more content and learn more about it as well as learning more about what interests the audiences and increase their readership and engagement. Here, let's pull that down since that's a, that looks nice. So they use a pin it button on their website. They also added it to their email newsletter. And then they also wanted to understand readers' interests. So they use their findings to craft boards like interiors and office and to guide how they organize content on their own site. And to quote them, what's fascinating about Pinterest is that it allows readers to engage with our content at an atomic level. Because they pin and organize various images into collections, we study these collections to understand how we can better organize and package our own content. That type of insight just isn't available with other platforms. So, for example, let's see if we've got somebody else who's on their website. This probably is not the, quite the right collection because it looks like they're all saved from Art Daily. Yeah, let's see if we can go back in time. Back to another board, maybe the interiors one. So what they could do is 
they would go, I guess, to other people's actually and pin onto their their website so they'd have collections very popular for people to have a look at. So what they have found is that they have found that they are got a lot of interest as well from it. So, for example, they have corresponding up boards on interest that have shown a traffic increase to their website about 6%. So it's a new channel of communication with their audiences and allows them to discover new projects and firms to feature on their website. And it takes less effort for them to drive more traffic using Pinterest compared with other social platforms. And, of course, they have more fun doing it because they like the visual nature of Pinterest. Um, but now we'll go and have a look at some of the more obvious ones, like a, uh, actually, it's a makeup store. Let me just type it in here. Yeah, Sephora.com. For those of you on audio, you can go to S E P H O. Wrong one. <laughs> there we go. Oh no, still not on the list. S yeah, there it was on the list. S E there it is. S E four S S E P H O R A dot C O M. Which is a makeup um uh Pinterest board. Uh 70% of the people on uh Pinterest are women. So um, this can be quite popular for women if you have a, a company that is uh, relevant to women. So with more than uh, 250 brands and 14,000 products, Sephora boasts one of the world's largest um, diverse selection of beauty products. And their principal goal for being on Pinterest was to make it easy to pin from Sephora.com to other people's boards. They would also use email to encourage Pinterest engagement and encourage clients to pin their beauty shopping list. So they could say, for example, that they could pin that to their board if they decided they wanted to buy it. Or they could send it to a friend by email and they can love it. Just give it a heart so it has hearts. Well, that's actually somebody else's board, Instagram. So they noticed that Pinterest users are regularly saving their favorite beauty products onto Pinterest boards on their site, and many of these images were from Sephora. So a growing number of potential clients were discovering Sephora products on Pinterest and visiting Sephora.com. So to improve the discoverability of their brand, they decided to put a pin it button on their website, on all their product pages, and then they coordinated the introduction of pin-it buttons with the Sephora Color Wash campaign aimed at helping pinners get acquainted with their site's new look. So pinners participating in the campaign were encouraged to find and pin color-coordinated beauty treasures on Sephora.com, giving them more opportunities to use improved site features like search and navigation. Within a few short months, Pinterest became a top 10 referring site for Sephora.com. So it was very much a natural fit for beauty aficionados, and they wanted to increase the awareness of their brand. And also they used it in marketing emails. Uh, they wanted to experiment with pinning activity through email. So regularly they include links to their Pinterest account in their email footers, and they have Pinterest eccentric emails and enables pin people to pin products from directly within the email. And so they created new boards that reflect the design of the emails, such as a color blocking board. And it resulted in significantly increasing pinning activities for the products that were featured in the emails. Over two of the most repin images today were featured in a Pinterest email. They saw a 60% growth in traffic from Pinterest. <coughs> Excuse me. So Sephora knows what their beauty community wants. By using Pinterest web analytics to observe the kinds of content that get the most pins and repins, they have come to learn which content will be popular with pinners, such as beauty lists, color swatches, and face charts. They also have what they call it lists, where it's just boards to store those things that they feel will highlight authentic favorite products of Sephora staffers and they can pin it to their own list as favorites. 
So they share their beauty expertise and they have a highly qualified audience. The average Pinterest follower spends 15 times more money on Sephora.com than the average Facebook fan. So it basically the experience of Pinterest has been very successful for Sephora. And another one, of course, for those of you who love food, is allrecipes.com. Um, for those of you who love food, you've probably seen the website with all the recipes. So let's see if we can get the actual website. No, we can't. Let's see if we can get the actual website here. These are just all related to food. Nope. Come on. Give me the website. There it is. No, that's not it. Uh, Oh, yeah, here it is. This has got, we should see if we could find the, um, let's go to the All Recipes board if we can. These are just all peoples who followed um, All Recipes. So this is, I think this is the All Recipes um, with a board, a Pinterest boards, and this is the Pie Countdown 2015, and it has 374,000 followers. Get inspired with a new pie every day until Thanksgiving. Well, that's a bit out of date. But anyway, so 37 people have pinned the stabilized wet cream icing recipe from allrecipe.com. <laughs> and, of course, you can go back to the website. So it's a very popular food, of course, on Pinterest. So if you have a food-related business, you can be successful, too. But I'm sure you never thought a pet insurance business would be very popular on Pinterest. So they have a global uh, community of 30 million uh, cooks who want to, recipes. And so they want to grow their community. And they want to send high-qualified traffic to allrecipes.com. So they use a pin-it button on their website with, for every single website um, recipe page. And they also designed a new page template where the pin it button is above the fold so that people will find it easier and pin the recipes. Um, within three months, more than 50,000 recipes were pinned, resulting in 139 million Pinterest impressions and clicks, increasing their uh, Pinterest by 900%. And so they've also put it into their email marketing. I should probably go and have a look and see what that looks like putting your Pinterest button in the, into the marketing emails distributed to more than 6 million monthly subscribers. And it's had a dramatic in effect on engagement. In less than a week after the release of the newsletter, the number of clicks to allrecipes.com from Pinterest increased four times, repins and likes increased three times, and reach grew by two times. So as you can imagine, that also increased their business. So Pinterest can be a good place for some businesses and then not so good for other businesses. But believe it or not, I believe, if I can spell it right, vacuum cleaner, even vacuum cleaners can have a big following. Uh, let's see. Where is the big following one? Look at that. Um, let's, we have to find the actual website or, oh no, BuzzFeed. Uh, let's see. Well, a lot of people are pinning vacuum cleaners onto their boards. Um, let's see if we can find who do we, what's this Black & Decker board? No, not Black & Decker. Um, oh, you know who. Uh, Dyson, <laughs> Dyson vacuums. I'm sure they'll have a lot of followers. Oh. Dyson. Okay. And let's see. Yeah, no, this is not the board of Dyson. I want the board of Dyson. Okay, well, let's go to one of these people's places that has a lot of pins. 
one called Vacuum Cleaner for Home has 2,600 followers, and all they do is talk about vacuums. Top five best vacuums for stair and carpet review. And depending on how it is all arranged, she probably gets a commission when someone clicks on it and goes to the website of wherever that is and buys a vacuum. So there you go. <laughs> Even vacuums are popular on Pinterest. Um, as far as my topics, my quotes, let's go have a look at my topics. My topics, let's see. I've got um, some pins for my website, so that's good. Um, pins for Pinterest, it's always popular, of course. Uh, mindsets, always popular. Quotes is really popular, business concepts, etc. But some of the ones, others aren't that popular. So it just depends on who you are and whether you feel that Pinterest will work for you. I mean, if it could work for a pet plan insurance company, it can work for anyone because it just depends what you use as pins. Like cute dogs. So there you go. So that's, <laughs> hopefully that gives you an idea on uh, Pinterest and how you should use it or not use it uh, for your brand. As you can see, it's very much, um, it's very much branding, really. It's very much uh, using concepts ideas and photos of things that are sort of relevant to your business, but not really. I'm not sure why that's in there. <laughs> or DIY. Oh, it's DIY pet projects <laughs> to your business. So I hope that uh, gives you some idea on whether or not you should use Pinterest for your brand. Thank you for listening. This has been Jane Gardner at Solopreneur Success Strategies. Please go and subscribe at jgtips.com backslash programs. And also to find out about other programs as well over at jgtips.com slash programs. And over there we have a free uh, mindset magazine for you to check out at jgtips.com backslash mindset offer so welcome thanks for listening and i hope to see you again here tomorrow as this is a seven day a week show on mindset your customer getting your message out on social media and on your website talking about strategies talking about business systems talking about all kinds of things including the skills that you need as a solopreneur so please come back and subscribe at jgtips.com backslash programs thank you